excerptors from the video series using Atelier Interactive with Mitch Waite. In this video, internationally known artist Mitch Waite uses Atelier Interactive for conventional painting techniques, but when needed, he is able to easily take advantage of Atelier Interactive's unique ability to delay drawing and blend. Whether creating a landscape, portrait, or figurative work, Mitch is able to control the paint instead of having the paint control him. Atelier Interactive is the world's only acrylic paint that can be used for ordinary painting effects, even when mixed with conventional acrylics, or for extraordinary wet and wet blending effects when used on its own. Use water the first few hours when you want to blend if so desired. The next day or days later, use unlocking formula to blend. The techniques and methods Mitch uses are readily accessible to beginners and professional painters alike because he simply uses a water sprayer when he wants to take advantage of Atelier Interactive's revolutionary properties. It doesn't matter where you start when you're doing this, you're working with composition. It doesn't matter about building layers, detail, which comes first. All you're doing is filling in blocks, areas which make this composition. So let's take a little bit of the background. We'll take some of this blue, add a bit of burnt sienna in, and basically blue, this cobalt blue and burnt sienna, basically they just make a grey. And you can either make it more warm by adding burnt sienna or more cool by adding more blue. And I'm using this with a touch of white to make this cool blue background here. The paints I'm using are interactive. And the reason why I use these is because they are perfect for blending, unlike normal acrylics, which are rather tricky because as soon as you get them down, they start drying and you can't, you can't work them any further. But with these particular paints, and the reason I really love using them, is that as soon as they feel dry, you can re-spray them with uh, just a mist spray of water and they come back to life. And the reason they do that is because they don't skin over. They actually dry through, which means as soon as they start to feel a little bit tacky, you just spray them and they, they rehydrate. So we've got a, a gray blue there and we'll work around the picture this way. Uh, let's just take uh, a load of those greens. So if I add a little bit of uh, yellow and raw sienna into this side of that mix, then I can just start putting on all of these greens around here like that, come down to the house there and across here. And this here now, you see that is dry. And the great thing about this paint is that I can now just, it's a mist spray, you're not saturating it. You just put a mist spray on like that and that rehydrates it. And now that paint you can see is, uh, is just like oil. So now I can blend that Rather than having to overpaint it and remix, I can just simply take a little bit of burnt sienna, greyish burnt sienna, and just drop it in like that. Even that's maybe slightly too strong, so I take a bit off the brush, and there you see, because it's like working with oil, because that's wet paint instead of uh, painting on top, that's blending in to this blue. We take the cobalt blue here, which we used originally into the background, just for a little bit more variation. Because I've used the spray, these paints are blending together rather than having to remix. So I had a nice variety of blues in that background and drop some behind these trees like that. So that, that, that gives us that nice wet oily uh, feel that you get when you paint with oils uh, as opposed to normally when you paint in acrylics and you end up with these sort of very staccato paint strokes which don't blend in. If this dries too far, then I always keep uh, another medium inside another one of these bottles, which is the unlocking fluid. And uh, that simply will unlock the paint even when it's fully dry. Now, as you can see, the, the painting is a long way in here. I'll take a bit of the burnt sienna and mix it into this gray area on the palette, just to make some darker, variations of those oranges there. The trick to colouring and toning is subtlety, not bashing out this. Anyone can just bash out colours for effect, 
but that isn't what makes a beautiful painting very often it's subtlety so try to keep your colors as you'll see we do in the uh, in a later program keep your colors nice and soft and and blending with uh, a degree of of harmony and subtlety that is is not trying to accent too quickly having got the main framework of colors and tones on here next thing is to go back to the subject with a slightly smaller brush now i'm not going to work with fine detail but just a slightly smaller brush here it's actually a number four hogs hair at the back here it would be nice to see the way that road comes down properly so take some of this gray blue that we've been using already down here on that wall at the back here is slightly warmer so something about there would probably be about right when it comes down onto the road those shadows are going to be bluer and when it goes into the lady walking slightly darker so if I take my ultramarine mix it you see there the palette is just getting a bit dry so just give that a little bit of a spray like that I don't want the paint drying on the palette see there it just continues to mix now like it was an oil palette that is absolutely brilliant I've never come across anything that does that quite as good as that ever before so that's good enough almost we in fact what what's great to see with this paint is that because it stays wet you can push this around so I can do that push that I can push this in here like this and even if that dries in a few minutes I can come back and play with that little bit of detail We'll go for some final darks and lights and maybe just play with the road a little bit to see how this composition. This isn't a picture about detail, it's a picture about composition. We have to keep that in our mind all the time. This needs a little spray, so I don't want, just give that a little spray. I don't want these to go on, you know, separate. I want them to blend in a little bit to what's underneath. So these brush strokes go on like that. Just Finally, we'll just take this small brush I've got here and just put a few final touches around her. You can see she's starting to dry now and I don't want her to. So we just give that a little spray and that means I can play around with this area if I want. The first thing I'm going to do is just put a bit of warm light by mixing the white into these warm colours. Got the raw sienna and the burnt sienna there. And just put a little bit of warm light on this back wall here like that. Maybe a little bit just down on here. And I'll look for other areas where I can see that warm light, like that. And quite a good thing to do is spray the picture underneath so that it is blending. You see, you can blend those like that. And I'm going to put more burnt umber than ultramarine blue. I want it to stay warm. Take off some of the paint off the brush. I'll do that onto my rag here. So that, in fact, I'm not laying it on quite so heavy like that. And just make it more subtle by uh, running it into the paint underneath, which is a little bit wet because I've just sprayed it. So it's a little bit like working with oil. Well, a lot like working with oil, I should say. And there we just creates a bit more depth with that extra little bit of power. Do a little bit on this side here. And of course, if I didn't like any of this, if I thought I'd overstated it and made it a little bit too strong for the composition, then I can blend in because we're working with these paints that will keep blending if you want.